Good morning, everybody. It's nice. This morning, we could join over here in this platform of Zoom where we can have an open session of especially the teaching of how believers fail to walk the spiritual walk. Even other topics we can definitely get into as and you wish. Okay, so I'll start this session with a small prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. This wonderful morning, your grace is sufficient for us. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You will guide us, lead us as we go through this course of in the word and find out what are the reasons we don't able to walk a spiritual walk effectively so that we may be set free in the, these areas and where the truth is known, we will be set free, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I cover each and every one of us with the precious blood of the Lamb and all these gadgets and platforms and internet connections under the precious blood of the Lamb so that we may move on, Lord, smoothly and Lord, and get a wonderful time of interaction with each other, Lord, and be a blessed blessing for each other, Lord. Once again, I thank you and bless you in Jesus' name I pray. Amen and Amen. So, can somebody repeat the topic for my knowledge? <laughs> somebody, just read out the topic. Yes, Jenny, can you do that? Hello, are you hearing me? Yeah. Yeah, when do believers fail in their spiritual walk? Could you repeat it once again? When do believers fail in their spiritual walk? Beautiful. You can put on, um, put the mute. Uh, the first thing is, who is a believer? That is one we have to find out. Let's straight away get into the word and how we become a believer that we should know effectively from the word of God, not by our own understanding and thinking, but how the word says when you become a believer. Let's get into Galatians 3. <clears throat> 3, 2. He says, this only I would learn from you. Did you receive the spirit by works of the law? or by hearing of faith. Here Paul is asking two questions. Did we receive the Holy Spirit by works of the law or by hearing of faith? And the answer to be very right is by hearing of faith. So how do you become a believer is, sorry you have not, I am sorry you couldn't see the word I believe. I didn't share it. Give me a minute. Just I'll repeat it. Yeah. Galatians 3.3. This only I would learn. Yeah. This only I would learn from you. Did you receive the spirit by works of the law or by hearing of faith? So, when do you become a believer is when you receive the spirit of Christ or spirit of God or Holy Spirit inside your heart. That is the time when you become a believer. That is when you believe on the gospel. That is how you become a believer. Right? So, believers are those who have trusted on the finished work of the cross. That is the gospel. That Christ died for my sin, was buried and risen again on the third day. That is how you become saved and that is how you receive the spirit of Christ in your heart. That is how you became a believer. Uh, the common notions in the world is that we become believer because we have joined a church. We become a believer because I have taken a bat water baptism. I think that can be misleading. Though I believe in joining the church, believe in taking water baptism. But actually you become a believer when you receive the spirit of Christ. That is how we should be very clear in our understanding about how we become a believer. Let us see it, how Paul defines who is a believer. I am taking you into Romans and if you have any queries in between, you can definitely stop me and ask 
about your doubts. Oh, eight nine he says, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. That is the Holy Spirit. If the spirit of God dwells in you, but if anyone has not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So the perfect definition of a believer is if you have received the spirit of Christ in you, and this is a time when you receive it, as it is saying. But if anyone has not, that means there are many people who don't have the spirit of Christ. Yet they believe that they are believers. Okay. So this concept is clear to all of you, or you have some doubts about this? You can ask on this. Shall I move forward with that topic? Okay. Right. So now, how do you walk? After being a believer, let's get into this issue from the Word of God. Let's get into back into Galatians three, and I love that how Paul starts in Galatians three one. He says, "O foolish Galatians, who bewitched you not to obey the truth?" There is a Word bewitch bewitchment is not from God. That is a satanic force. That is how the evil world works, witchcraft and all. That is how bewitched is. So you not to obey the truth. To whom, before your eyes, Jesus Christ was written among you, crucified. Right? In some version, you have you have your word says that Jesus has. Died for our sin, buried and risen again. That is what it means to say the gospel. Then he is asked this. This only I would learn that already we have discussed. Now he says, "Are you so foolish, having begun in the spirit? That is the capital. The spirit is when you have received the spirit. Do you now perfect yourself in the flesh?" That again he is putting a question. Why? Because your perfection or your walk. As a believer, cannot come by your flesh walk. That's what he is wanting to emphasize. Because if you do that, you are suffering so many things in vain. If indeed it is in, even in vain, then he says, then he he is supplying the spirit to you and working powerful works in you. Is it by works of the law or by hearing of it? Again, the same. Two questions: the perfect. How do you walk perfect walk of a spiritual uh, believer? It is by not works of the law, but by hearing of faith. This is a very crucial thing, and this is one of the major reasons. Are you seeing this? This is the major reason when you are not walking by faith on the gospel. Then you will not be able to walk a very good spiritual, powerful life, because somehow many believers, after receiving Jesus by grace through faith, and that too not of yours, that is Ephesians two eight, again they get into works, that now they will by their own efforts will be able to do something so that God can bless them, God can give them things, God can have a relationship with them. That is not true. That is one of the major reasons why believers fail to walk a good spiritual life. Are you understanding that? Let's further read some verses and all. Then we'll come to know more about it. Let's go back into Galatians three. Then he says, Galatians three six. He says. Even as Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him for righteousness. If there would have been God forbid, for if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law, but it was not so. But the Scripture had concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. This is a very important verse of the Bible because we all were under sin. That is, Romans three twenty three also says that we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and that is the reason we cannot be justified by the obedience of the law. 
that we can only be justified by the promise by faith of Jesus Christ must, that is when we believe. So initially before the faith which came through Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of faith as mentioned in Hebrews 12.2, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. See, the only way people, by giving the law, people could be made not to commit more sin, but they could not be removed from sin. The sin nature could not be removed. So now, the, if you see all the law, all the law invariably means, if you do something wrong, kill it. So that is how a fear came in people, so that they would restrict doing, committing sin. But they didn't come out of sin. The sin nature could not be removed. So this is what the law was given at that time, just to keep you away from sin, so that there could be a, a, a made, uh, sorry, uh, a virgin available to bring Jesus Christ. You know that. This is what the next verse says. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. I am sorry, I should have shown it. In Just give me a minute. Yeah, this is a... It was added because of the transgression till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. This was one of the reasons the law was given so that a virgin could be there so that Jesus could come by the virgin birth. Right? So now before this faith and the grace came, that is Jesus Christ himself, they were kept under the law, shut up and unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Not Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. Even if you remember the, the ten, when you read Matthew 5 in that Jesus made all the old covenant, old testament law that is the ten commandments much more grievous. Like in the old testament ten commandments one could, one was considered murderer only when he physically murdered somebody. But now he said in Matthew 5 that if you have sent rack or said rascal to your brother, you have already murdered. In the Old Testament, physical intimacy brought the sin of adultery. But in the New Testament, Jesus made it so serious that if you have even thought about a woman in a wrong way, you have already committed adultery. In the Old Testament, you could hate your enemy and love your neighbor. But in the New Testament, he made it so serious, he said, love your enemy, not only love, pray for them, not only pray, you have to bless them. That's how it became more serious. So invariably, even that time, these Pharisees were still thinking that by obeying the Ten Commandments, they can be justified before God. But Jesus raised those Ten Commandments standards so high that nothing else but you will have to come to grace to be saved. That is how it says. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. This is what it means in 24th verse. Now nobody could be justified by the law, nothing else but by faith in Jesus Christ. But after that faith is come, we are no longer under the schoolmaster. That is what is mentioned in Romans 10.3 uh, 10, or 4, you see, Christ is the end of the law. Why? Because now grace and faith has come through Christ by which you can be made righteous through the gift of righteousness and that's how the new covenant stands on the basis of the blood of Jesus. Okay? I hope things are getting clearer to you and that is how you can also walk a spiritual walk in a better and a strong way when you understand these truths. 
that we have not to be under the law but under grace. That only can help you. Any questions till here? Or should I go further? Should I? Can you raise your hands? Yes? Yes. Okay. Now let's get into the word again. Now he says in 27, that is Galatians 3, 27, for as many as of you have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Here, this is not what water baptism is actually. This is spirit baptism. You know, you do not enter the, uh, that is, the ecclesiastic, uh, sorry, the church by basically in the New Testament it has been clarified, you become the part of the church by spirit baptism. I will show you. In a better way, you will be able to understand keeping 1 Corinthians 12.13 For by one spirit are we all baptized, not by water. For by one spirit we all are we all baptized into one body, that is the body of Christ, that is the church. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be born or free and have been all made to drink into one spirit. So that is how we become a Christian. That is how Paul said in Galatians also, right? So now we are getting it clear that we become the body of Christ by the baptism of the spirit, not by merely water baptism. Yes, but once you are spirit baptized, then you should take a water baptism to show the world because spirit baptism, spirit baptism is, you, people cannot see anything about the spirit baptism in you, but you can then proclaim to the world by taking water baptism that I am a spirit ba baptized guy, born again, child of God. And that is how water baptism becomes relevant for us. Otherwise, without the spirit baptism, if you are taking water baptism, you will, what I say in a very comical way, you were a dry sinner, you will come out wet sinner. That's all. <laughs> Nothing will change in you. You will not be able to walk by the spiritual walk which you should have, having the Spirit of God led by the Spirit. Okay? So, I hope uh, things are getting clearer to you, how we become spiritual and how we can walk in a better way in the spirit realm by the Spirit of God inside us, that is Christ in us, the hope of glory. That's what it says in 27 over here. For as many as of you have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male or female, for you are all one in Christ. This is one more spiritual truth over here. In the spirit realm, there is not, there is nothing like male and female. There is only one gender, that is male. Even God is the Father, God is the Son, the Holy Spirit. And so even male and female, when they are in Christ, they are having only the spirit. There is nothing difference of male and female in the spirit. In your soul and body, just give me a So. In your spirit, there is nothing like male or female. We are just one in Christ. But in your soul and body, you are male and female. That is very clearly evident when we see around us. And then he says, and if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Then you become the heirs of Christ. Then you have all these blessings and all these promises, yes and amen, in Christ. Not without in Christ. The blessings and promises which are mentioned in the Bible is only available for a born again child of God. Not to everyone. Amen? Okay. So, now again, any doubts or anything which you would like to ask? Any questions? Then I will take it further for we are 11.15, 11.20. Okay. Still one more hour. We can go. So, are you able to understand over till here? How things are going? Okay, now I'll take you into. Today, most of the things will be Galatians only. And you'll find how many beautiful truths are there in Galatians. 
now we are getting into chapter 4. Mm. Chapter 4, 7 says, before that it says 6, and because, because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying Abba Father. That is your born again spirit. Again, spirit, until unless you have not received the spirit of sons, the spirit, spirit of Christ, the spirit of the Holy Spirit, inside you are not a spiritual man. Okay? Then he says, and then the next thing is very beautiful, seventh verse, God doesn't call us now to be servants. In the old covenant, all these people were servants, Moses, David, all these were Solomon, all were servants, called servants. But now God wants to make us sons. That is wonderful thing which we have the benefit in the New Testament only. The old people were, Old Testament people were not made sons and even they were not even given the promise. You know that? That is the truth of the word of God. Now let's further go into Now I am taking into some beautiful truths from Just give me a minute. Now I am dropping down to Galatians 4.21. Tell me, ye that desire to be under the law, do ye not hear the law? That is a question again. Now he is explaining the two covenants available in the, new, in the Bible. For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a born maid, the other by a free woman. That is... One is through Hagar, that is Ishmael, and one is through Sarah, that is Isaac. Okay? Then he says, but he who was, you know, that is what is happening in the Christian world. We many times say, na, the nominal Christians, that is Abraham, God, Father, Abraham is one only. Father is one only, but there are two diversions in the Christian world. One is sons of Sarah, uh, sons of Sarah that is a true born again child of God and the second is of Hagar that is Ishmael that is how it is compared over here. These are, these are the people who have not yet received the promise and the spirit yet they call themselves so called born again Christians. No, they are not so. Let us see further in the word. But he who was of the born woman was born after the flesh, not by the work of the spirit. But he of the free woman was by promise. This is the difference between the true believer and the so-called believer of the Christian world. Who are definitely believing that God is the same, God the Father is the same, but they are not yet believing in the spirit. They are still believing on the law. That is by their own flesh always tries to fulfill the law but is not able to fulfill because flesh cannot be obedient to the law also. That is also the truth of the Bible. Now he says, which things are all allegory for those who are the two covenants, the one from the Mount Sinai which generated bondage which is Agar or that is Hagar and and what he says about Hagar is, for this Agar, Agar is a Mount Sinai in Arabia and answer it to the Jerusalem which now is. Even the present Jerusalem is again in the bondage. They have not yet still believed Messiah, Jesus Christ. And they are still following the old covenant and the offering of the sacrifice and all. Most of the Jews are not yet born again. Very few have become born again and they are under bondage with their children. So when you are under the law, you will be under a bondage. And even if you have become a believer and again getting into the law, you will get into bondage, which I am going to explain from Galatians 5 when it comes at the right time. 
So this is the problem of the body of Christ as so called. One are those who are got not yet born again, they are under the law, yet their father is the same, Abraham. Let they believe God in one way, but they don't know the spirit bond. That is the born again necessity for getting into the kingdom of God. So here he says, for it is written, rejoice barren that bearest not, break forth and cry for, for them. Now we brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. We brethren, that is the believer, true believer, the true born again child of God. The real people who are saved are those who are of Isaac, who is the ch children of promise. But as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born of the spirit, even so it is now. Even to, today, even in the body, the so-called body of Christ, these people who are under the law yet not born again, they definitely will persecute the born again child of God. They will literally come against grace very heavily. And that's how it is happening in the body of Christ. Because they don't understand the promise spirit birth which they should receive and that's how we they suffer. Nevertheless, what said the scripture? Cast out the born woman and her son for the son of the born woman shall not be heir with the son of free man. Cast out means we have not to be under the law. We have not to be under the law covenant. That is what it is stressing. So then brethren, we are not children of the born woman but of the free. So this is how we have to understand. Really, if you want to walk a wonderful spiritual walk, according to the Bible, you have not to get under the law. Then you get into bondage. Let's see this more clearly from the word of God. Galatians 5, I am now taking to you. you. And it starts with one in the same way. Now he says, Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. That means there is an advisory given. That means even if you have become a believer, born again, child of God, born of the Spirit, yet you can get into entangled into the yoke of bondage. That is what I wanted to caution. This is one of the major reasons why Believers struggle their spiritual walk in when they get into the yoke of bondage. You know how the liberty of is in Christ that is due to the Spirit of God. Let's read it in 2 Corinthians 6 17. Here it says. Is 2 Corinthians 6, I believe I opened. 2 Corinthians 6, yes, 17. Nee, 2 Corinthians 3, sorry, very sorry. 2 Corinthians 3, 16 is 17. 2 Corinthians 3, 17, I am op opening up. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. That is how you become free from the bondage of sin and the sin nature. Okay? So you have to understand this thing. That is what in Galatians now when we are going back into 5.1 this is where you have to understand how we became, came into the liberty or we have spent, uh, we have celebrated the Independence Day recently on 15th August. But in the spirit realm you become free when you have the spirit of Christ in you. But we then he, there is an advice that we should not get into the yoke of bondage. That's how Paul is explaining in the next verse. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if you be circumcised, Christ shall not profit you. Christ shall profit you nothing. He is picking up the first law given to Abraham. That is the law of circumcision. There was a law given to Adam and Eve that was exclusively for them and they disobeyed and made us all sinners. But when Abraham was chosen, he was given the first law of circumcision. That is how he is putting up, taking it up. But he says, if you are getting circumcised, Christ will not benefit you anything. Because that is the law covenant. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised, that he is adapted to do the whole law. Because the problem is, once you get under the law, 
you will have to fulfill the law completely. There cannot be options of one or two and few we cannot, we yet we will be in the law. No, you cannot do that is in James 1, 2, 10 I believe. If you obeyed all the law in broken one, you are broken all. So that is the problem of the law. That is why believers have not to go under the law but should always walk by grace that is the just shall live by faith that is what the faith of that is the gift of righteousness by faith. And if we are getting in the law what he says Christ is become of no effect unto you that is a very dangerous statement given for us. Christ is become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law you have fallen from grace. That is one of the major reason believers are not able who have got back into the law that is how they are not able to walk the spiritual walk because you can only walk by grace through faith not by the law amen law is not wrong law is spiritual law is holy but it cannot make you walk the way god wants you to walk let's back get back into uh, the verse again in that place then he says in 5 for we through the spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith how we have to walk by the righteousness of faith that is the gift of god why because when you are using that righteousness and grace what the bible says in romans 5 let's get into there and we'll find it out how we should reign in life that is in 5, 7, Romans 5, 17, it says, For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, that is Adam, much more, that is a wonderful statement in English, much more they which receive, they don't earn, they receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. This is what Jesus came he wants to live through you. He wants to reign, make you reign in this life. That is how a Christian walk is made. Is That is the true way of walking in Christ. You cannot do it by again getting by your own efforts, your flesh, your law and all. You cannot. You will have to walk by the spirit of Christ given to you. That is what Paul understood when he said in Galatians 2.20. Let us read that. Galatians. Okay, let's get back into Galatians 5 and one more thing I want to show you there. Galatians 5 again. We have read this, for we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. Then he says, for in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor, so that means that obedience of the law has of no effect now after coming of Jesus and the faith and his righteousness. But faith which worketh by law. This is wonderful. Faith which worketh by love. This is not your love towards God. It is God's love towards us. So the faith which and even the faith of God which is given to us can only work by the love of God given in our hearts, that is in Romans 5, which has been poured. So how faith works? When you know how much God loves you. Are you understanding this? That is how you walk. The spiritual walk has to be, will be only wonderful when you know how much God loves you. Because faith worketh by love. How? The love of God, which has He given us as a gift again, the love of Jesus. And that is how we are able to walk the spiritual walk in an effective way. That is how we way. Because faith is only effective by love, not by the law. Faith, faith cannot be effective because there is faith. In the law, there is nothing of faith. It is already, always operated by grace, the love of God, which is there. And how your faith becomes effective when you know one thing which is in let's read that that is in Philippians 
I am taking you into Philemon. Where is Philemon? Jude, Colossians, Philippians. Philemon, yeah. One, and I am opening sixth verse. Here it says that the communicants communication of thy faith may become effectual. How it becomes effectual? By the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. God has already given all spiritual blessings, all the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, everything, the gift of the spirits inside you. And when you know that, that how much God loves you and has given already, then your faith becomes effectual. Are you gathering that this is wonderful verse in Philemon 1.6 which I love. Your faith can be effective only when you are knowing how much God, you have been blessed through Christ. Even Jesus said, the one who is forgiven more will forgive more. The one who is forgiven more will love more. That is how it works. So faith can be effective only when you know what all Jesus has done for you. So today... I don't read the word of God to please God. I read the word to know that how much God has already been pleased with me. If you have that mindset and search out these things, verses from the Bible, how much God loves you and is wanting to work more than what you think and imagine through the spirit of God inside you, then you become an effective Christian. And this is what Paul understood very effectively when he said over here in Galatians, 2.20. Let's read that. Galatians 2.20. I hope today you are un enjoying these verses and the truth of the Bible and understanding the grace of God. Now he says you are here. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. This should come true. This is a really born again, powerful Christian. Christ liveth in me. And he, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Not your faith. Not your love. You have to live by the faith of the Son of God, by the grace of God. Who loved and why it has happened? Because who loved me and gave himself for me? That is the gospel. So now are you able to understand how you can become an effective, powerful, supernatural walking on this earth with the grace of God? That is a believer. Where you are 24 into 7, having a powerful walk, a believer's walk with authority, with the grace, trampling serpents and scorpions against and coming against the power of evil one. That is how we should be in this world. Believer has to be 24-7 overcomer, not under. He has to be overcome and that's what Jesus came to give us a life, a life of abundance. Satan comes to steal, kill and destroy, but we are not to be stolen and destroyed. We have Jesus Christ who came to give us life of abundance and full of life. That is what a true believer life is. And that is what the topic was, that how many people fail in the spiritual walk because they, even after they have received grace and have been saved by grace and faith, they again get into the law and then again get into bondage, as Paul was explaining in Galatians 5. So I, be, I hope, and one more verse I will show you, and I will close and have opened this session for discussions. Let's get into Colossians 2.6 Colossians 2.6 It says over here, Rooted and built up in him and stabbed, oh, sorry, that is 7. Sorry. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, how? By grace through faith that do not of yours. That is Ephesians 2.8 then he says, so walk ye in him. That is the same way as you receive by grace through faith, you have to walk in him. Not by getting under the law, not getting into legalism, nor your own effort. 
I believe I have put forth uh, the justification how you can be a strong believer and walk in effectiveness in this world with Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I am keeping this session open for any questions you have. You can unmute and talk to me if you want any answers. Anything? No questions. Very clear. Okay, can you display this Colossians 2 6? Oh, sure. I'll do this. Colossians 2 6. Here it is. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him. So you have to start by grace through faith and you have to walk by grace through faith. That is just will live by faith. That's what the Bible is explaining time and again. Not by the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. And you operate on the law of faith. That is something more which I will be in course of future discussions, I will tell you. No kingdom works without the law. Now we are not under the law of sin and death. That is the Ten Commandments. Now we are under the law of faith. That is the spirit of Christ in you. Amen. Any more questions? Can you explain that uh, Colossians, I think, 2, 2, 5. Okay, I'll take you back there. Colossians 2, 2 5. 5 but 2, 2, 6, I think. 2, 2 5 and 6? 2, 2, 5 you want first? Uh, 2, 5, 2, 5, yeah. 2, 5. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet... I hope I opened the right verse. Is it right? Galatians 2, 5. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am, am I with you in the spirit, joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of faith in Christ. I think if you read this amplified version, it will be more clear. For though I am away from you in body, that means he is not physically present with them, yet I am with you in the spirit, delighted that the sight of your standing shoulder to shoulder in such orderly array and the firmness and the solid front and steadfastness of your faith in Christ, that leaning of the entire human personality in Him in absolute trust and confidence in His power, wisdom and goodness. Not confident in our power, our wisdom and goodness, but in the confidence in Christ. That is fifth. And then he says, as you have, as you have therefore received Christ, even Jesus the Lord, so Walk, regulate your lives and conduct yourselves in union with and conformity to Him. I think that's so clear, right? Very clear. Yeah. That is how you have to walk. Walk by faith and grace. Grace is the ability given to you to do things which you cannot do. That's what we need. As a believer, we cannot walk. That's why he says, Jesus said in Philippians, I can do all things, Paul said, I can do all things through the strength of Jesus. What is the strength of Jesus? The grace of Christ inside us. That is the power of God. That means, that is the reason, that is the power of resurrection given to us. If you read Ephesians 1, you will come to know that we can do all things through the strength of Jesus. We are seated at the right hand of the Father in heavenly places. Till you have renewed your mind with all these write words and understand them and really trust them, then you can walk by grace through faith very easily. Amen. Any more questions? Can I now ask a question to you all? Did you understand the whole thing which I said before you? Kindly open your mics and react. No, that means I could not. Should I believe that? Hello? Yeah, Jennifer. Yes, loud please. 
और यू हैव सम क्वेश्चन लगे पार्टन योर वॉइस इज नॉट कमिंग कैन यू बी अ बिट आई थिंक वॉट हैपन्स इज यू पुट दिस हाँ नाउ प्लीज I am not even able. To, what I suggest is you you remove your headphone and connect it to the direct phone. It will be more clearer. Okay. Okay. Put it off and directly connect to your phone and speak in the phone itself. This uh, this reduces the voice to come over here. Within you yourself, you are able to hear very well. Yes, can you speak now? Yeah, Jennifer. Any? Uh, I think can you? Yeah, me? now your voice is very clear. Can you? Okay. Hmm. No, no, no. I said okay until you can ask questions so that we will be able to tell something. No, no. I am not. I ask question that whether you did understand whatever I taught you the whole one and a half or two hours. Yeah. Could yes, you ask? Uh, okay. now we can understand um as a believer again and again we fall into the law yeah so god stuck in that that brings you uh, into bondage we know about the grace of the god and love of the god everything we know but again we are going and flipping into the law and make us uh, very uh, burdensome burdensome it becomes a very burdensome walk for a believer yes yes sir that's why that is the greatest so burden is, yes by the seminar i can understand by grace by faith uh, we have to go so by faith means we have to understand more about the god's love which is poured yes, upon us yes that's true that's true that's true that's true so, so the we new... have to move on with the love of god yes the grace the grace and faith and we have to walk through that yeah that is the strength of a believer amen very good yes. well taken i am so blessed to hear that reaction from you so blessed so blessed Thank you. anybody else who could get something new today in your life through these teachings somebody can react why i am wanting a reaction is i am trying to do i have missed some part of this rec recording in between but yet i have recorded a quite amount of it i will be putting it on the youtube your reactions will also help people to take a step of faith to follow these teachings That's why I want a reaction from you, Rachel. Normally, I used to think uh, out, oh yeah, again and again there is uh, fall over in my life. Yeah. Even though I know the scriptures, I know everything and all, uh, there is something I am missing. I don't know what. How I am uh, getting fall again and again? I don't know how. So that, that's uh, great, Jennifer. Even if any other have not understood, if you have understood, that's a great achievement for my this one day. Uh, interaction i am so blessed yes, i am so exactly. blessed thank you thank you thank you very much for your reaction anybody else can also give something okay. like a testimony or reaction for the teachings which you have heard today rachel shiba um, yeah okay. yeah this yeah. is just daily a grateful daily meaningful uh, i could i could also understand uh, we have to get more grace from god we have to pray more for the grace of the lord to pour upon us yes good we are good doing, uh, as jennifer said yeah now you can react please again richard please what you were saying hello one minute one minute yeah uh, the session was really meaningful sir mm -hmm. pastor can you hear me yeah yeah very clear thank you uh really helped us to, uh, how to live in the spiritual uh, walk and uh, uh, always we are doing law. we are uh, slipping into the law only we uh, we know we could understand how to uh, live in a spiritual life and we need to pray more uh, for the grace of the lord to walk in the spiritual way yes uh, so let us really meaningful i can so nice of you so nice of you sharing that wonderful mm -hmm. comment and words for encouragement for many other people anybody else would like to share 
there are some three more people michael jovan somebody joined by galaxy a31 and tefila no, michael jovan is uh, my id okay but how come you have seen two places you have shown at jennifer no well. it seems the id name is jennifer but it's coming i don't know how okay fine fine no issues okay tefila can you react on this session hello anyhow so with all that we can close this session today and we can think about doing it again uh, jab i uh, one more question yes more please question, yes please that so time. now uh, uh, how how to read a bible uncle we have to read first these new testament portions and then we have to connect with the old testament uh, i will there is nothing like a thumb rule like that but what i did i got saved in the year 1998 and the first thing i did i took the good news bible for the children and i okay. read the whole bible around in 3 months in one shot right okay. from genesis to revelation why i am saying that you should go through the bible completely once in fact in my, my natural my official life also one of my officers used to say one thing very beautiful there are a lot of rules and regulations and laws and all for our office working he would always say that you should like for general finance accounts rules he said you go through that book which is having all these things once so that you know there is something written about something somewhere in that book that you should grasp okay. so if one, if you okay. go once through the bible you will be able to get that it was written somewhere this thing now what he said was that rest when you are working you have the whole force of accountants junior accountants and all they will come and show you the rule provided you ask okay. but if you don't know there is a rule you not ask at all <laughs> so they will not even show you and you will be in the darkness so the best recommendation from my side is once if you have not yet read the whole bible you should row read the bible from genesis 1 to revelation last one chapter then the rest is to be reading it by the guidance of the holy spirit there after now when i have i read the bible i always used to say a small prayer holy spirit help me because there is a beautiful verse in the bible why the holy spirit has been given to you let's read that that is in john 14 26 i believe john 14 I got born again and then I understood this thing and then I did it this way only. It says over here in 1426 But the comforter which is the Holy Ghost whom the Father will send in my name he shall teach you all things. When he can teach you all things when you have read the Bible. He cannot teach you if you have not read the Bible. He shall teach you all things to your and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. That was a great promise. I still stick to that. It is not I who have to do it. It is the Holy Spirit given to me that I have to ask Him, Comforter and Helper. You will. He will not help you till you ask Him. I believe that, and I did it, and very easily I could understand the word thereafter. When I got born again, received the Spirit. Ask the spirit; he will guide. Amen. Okay, okay, okay uncle. Actually, so, I, have, I have read fully. Actually, uh, we people uh, read it in Tamil, uncle. So it is nice to read in English also. Now I can understand more than that. Why I am saying in English and also not English one version? You should see multiple versions where you will get clarification of the beautiful revelation of the word. I have read today. Many people ask me, uncle, how do you quote these words so easily? if you will come sometime at my home or somewhere i'll show you how many versions i have read so i did that effort okay, okay i have i have i have read four parallel bible versions together i have read god's word i have read king james new king james nkjv i have read um, god uh, god's word good news bible then many many versions i have read in english and the comparative study in the parallel bibles which we do of amplified bible and all so that has given opened up my revelation knowledge of the word very easily and then now i completely depend on the holy spirit to do it see i don't uh, i can tell you i didn't prepare anything today for how about how i'll go in this 
but I completely trust that the Holy Spirit will bring it into my remembrance what I have to teach you. That is a Christian okay. life. That's what a, that is yes. a life depending on what Jesus can do for you. Okay. Christian okay. life is a very easy life, I can tell you, provided you know how you have to. I'll show you one verse and then we can finish it up. This is where people are not understanding. Galatians uh, 5 again, I am taking you. Galatians 5 and these are the fruit of the Spirit. Twenty-fifth verse, Galatians 5, 25. I am taking you into the Amplified. If we live by the Holy Spirit, that is our born again Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. This many people are not doing it. We have become born again by the Spirit. Yet we are not walking by the Spirit. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. There is the two things which a believer has to come across. It is your choice to, you can become born again, but yet you can, we may not be walking by the Spirit. And walking by the Spirit is by led by the Spirit, by the Word of God. Walking by the Spirit means walking by the Word of God because Word is Spirit and life. So how much you are using the Word to walk during your walk in the day-to-day -day life? That's what he says in Romans 8, 14. Those who are led by the Spirit are the children of God. Who are led? Where? In every area. About your cooking, about your dealing, your work. I used to ask, everything about my files in the office I used to ask the Lord how I have to do it. That is how you walk by the Spirit. Not that okay. supernatural walk going on a Sunday and <laughs> hearing the word. Day to day, where should I park the vehicle? Have you asked that? I have done it and I have seen the result. If you don't hear the voice of you will see something, a scratch car or something because you have not obeyed what God told you. I have seen that obedience in my life. When you become obedient in small things, then He can make you walk in big things. Today I can hear the voice of the Lord and pray for many things very easily because I have been obedient in small things. Even applying how much of cream, I, uh, shaving cream I have to put on my brush. I have started asking for such small things. And now I can hear the voice of the Lord very easily. That's what I have experienced. Right then? Shall we close? Okay, just a That's word of... Uncle, Uncle, actually, when yes. I read Galatians 3, uh, 4, it? usually, like, here and there, I can understand, but the actual truth, I could understand today. Wow. Now, I feel like reading again immediately after and this. Keep session. on reading it. You'll get every time you read the word, you'll get a new revelation out of it. New revelation. That is my experience with the word of God. Beautiful. That's the that's wonderful thing happened in your life today, if you have gone through through this, uh, this word session. I am so blessed, so blessed. Okay, then let's close it with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, that you have been so faithful, Lord, that you have blessed each and every one who has been there and wonderful testimonies which they have given today, Lord, that the revelation of the word of God has come true, Lord. I, Lord, bless that as I put this thing on the YouTube, Lord, this can be a blessing for many, many other people, Lord. Once again, I thank you and bless you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen.